Good morning and welcome to St. Anthony's. Good morning. Today is Friday, May 22nd, and the Mass is celebrated for the Burget family. Today we celebrate St. Rita of Cassia. She was born near Cassia in Umbria, in Italy. She was married at the age of 12, despite her frequently repeated wish to become a nun. Her husband was rich, quick-tempered and immoral, and had many enemies. She endured his insults, abuse, and infidelities for 18 years and bore him two sons who grew to be like him. Towards the end of his life, she helped to convert her husband to a more pious way of life, but he was stabbed to death by his enemy not long afterwards. He repented before he died and was reconciled to the church. Her sons planned to avenge their father's death. When Rita's pleas were unavailing, she prayed that God should take their lives if that was the only way to preserve them from the sin of murder. They died of natural causes a year later. Rita asked to join the convent of St. Mary Magdalene at Cassia. She was rejected for being a widow since the convent was for virgins only and later given the impossible task of reconciling her family with her husband's murderers. She carried out the task and was allowed to enter the convent at the age of 36. She remained there until her death at the age of 70. She is widely honored as a patron saint of the impossible or lost causes. Spirit. Amen. The Lord with you. And with your spirit. God in his goodness call us to follow him. Let us pause for a moment during the times in our lives where we have not faithfully followed the Lord, have not heard his call to holiness. For these times, let us ask the Lord for his prayer and mercy. Lord Jesus, you have said to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to follow you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Bestow on us, we pray, O Lord, the wisdom and strength of the cross, with which you were pleased to endow St. Rita, so that suffering in every tribulation with Christ, we may participate ever more deeply in his pastoral mystery, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One night, while Paul was in Corinth, the Lord said to him in a vision, Do not be afraid. Go on speaking, and do not be silent, for I am with you. No one will attack and harm you, for I have many people in this city. He settled there for a year and a half, and taught the word of God among them. But when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews rose up together against Paul and brought him to the tribunal, saying, This man is inducing people to worship God contrary to the law. 
When Paul was about to reply, Gallio spoke to the Jews, If it is a matter of some crime or malicious fraud, I should with reason hear the complaint of you Jews. But since it is a question of arguments over doctrine and titles, and of your law, you own that and see to it yourselves. I do not wish to be a judge of such matters. And he drove them away from the tribunal. They all seized Sosthenes, the synagogue official, and beat him in full view of the tribunal. But none of this was of concern to Gallio. Paul remained for quite some time, and after saying farewell to the brothers, he sailed for Syria, together with Priscilla and Aquila. At Sincretia, he had shaved his head because he had taken a vow. The word of the Lord. Then thank you, God. God is king of all the earth. God, God is king, king of all the, of the earth. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great king over all the earth. God, God is king of all the earth. earth. He brings people under us, nations under our feet. He chooses for us our inheritance, the glory of Jacob, whom he loves. God, God is king, king of all the earth. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy. The Lord amid triumphant blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God is King for all the earth. Alleluia. Did her life sound easy? No. Did her life sound great? No. Would you want to live her life? Questionable, right? I wonder during her life, did she ever ask God, take away the cross? Because I say that, you know, how many, today's gospel we hear about Whatever you ask in my Father's name, I will grant to you. I wonder if she ever asked that. Because I thought to myself, here is a woman at the age of 12 being forced to marry. Did she ever want to get married at the age of 12? No, no. She did not. And how, what, were her, what was her husband like? He was a very difficult man, mean to live with. Not only was he mean, but what was he also? 
a womanizer, an unfaithful man. A really sounds like the worst possible combination for a husband. So it didn't sound like they had a great marriage, I would imagine. And from this marriage, what was their life like? Did they have any children? Two. Two. And I wonder, what did she pray for her child to be like? I would imagine, though, no, she probably prayed for her sons to be a good person, a good man, two good men. And how did they turn out? Just like their dad. And you, can, and you can imagine where this is going to. Of course, he was not a very honest, very nice person, a very mean person, in fact, a womanizer. You can imagine, and over the course of his life, a person like that would probably have many enemies. And of course, it's not unexpected soon for him later on to be killed by one of his enemies. And as a result, the sons wanted to revenge their father. And of course, she, did Rita want this? She didn't. So much. What did she want for them more than anything else? What did she want for, for them more than anything else? If she didn't want revenge for them to, to, be, to, to be vengeful, what did she want for them? Want them to die, them to die before they could do any evil acts. So B, what would you say her goal was for her son is? So at the end of the day, her wish was her, for her son to be a good, good man. Regardless what happens, she wants them more than else, just her, their salvation. I think it's safe to say that's what she wants more than anything else. And of course, be careful what you wish for. They died of natural cause before, before uh, they could be, before they could kill, be vengeful. And for her, and during that time, later on, throughout her life, she she caused, sounds like she made conversions. She helped her husband to be converted, of course, later as you have seen, heard in the story. And of course, when her husband and children died, sons died, what did she want to become? A nun! Was she readily welcome? Oh, come on, join us! No! It seems like her life is, is a set, one set back after the other, despite her best intention. And isn't that oftentimes, it seems her story is our story? That we know, despite the, our best intention and perhaps the desires we want in our heart, does God seem to grant it right away? No, he seems to have a convoluted way to get his, to, to get his, to, for our prayers to be answered. And it's the same thing in our life is that to be persistent in our faith journey, not to give up hope. And oftentimes, you know, oftentimes, what is our interpretation when we don't get what we want right away? Now, yesterday, ASAP, what is often our interpretation? How does God usually answer your prayer? You have heard today's gospel tells us, whatever you ask in my Father's name, I will grant it to you. Did he say immediately, right now, whatever you ask? Yes, he didn't say, he just said, I will answer your prayer. You'll get, but you're not going to get, it doesn't say that you'll get it right now. And oftentimes, I think from our experience, it seemed like in God's time. In God's time, you know, the funny thing about God's time is, it could be any time, not necessarily even in this lifetime. Isn't it? That God's plan is even greater than we can ever imagine. That ultimately, it's about the salvation, the soul of all. That same Rita, throughout her suffering and pain, helped so many people to conversion of their, of their life, a change. And I don't know if St. Rita ever thought of her life that her life would amount to so much, to do so much good to become a saint. But you know, in our life, oftentimes the fruit of our work can we see it in this lifetime? No. Not necessarily, is it? And I'm always amazed sometimes life, it seems to work, is that for the next generation, the reason I say that in the East Coast right now, they're anticipating the cicada, the cicadas. And then the cicada, if you know anything about it, all about them, they go dormant for 12, I mean for 13 to 17 years. 
Imagine an insect. And you know where they go as dormant? Underground, in trees. They're hidden away for 13 to 17 years. That's all their life. Most of their life is just spent dormant. Do you know what their, their life ultimately is about? Eating after 12 or 13 years, I can imagine, yes, they would be very hungry after that. But is that all it is about? Once they get, they're out of hibernation, do you know what they do right away? Breed. Breed, that's right, for the next generation. Their life ultimately is to give their life, ultimately, after they, they breed, they'll die. And that's it. And our life too, oftentimes, our life Oftentimes, it's not only about our life now, but it's about the next generation. And oftentimes, you know, we forget that in our world that we live in. What is the focus of this world? For many people, often ourselves, the betterment of ourselves. It's not about the next generation or the next or anyone else. Oftentimes, it's a focus on ourselves. And God's view is a lot different than that. You know, it's like it's the world long view. And oftentimes, we forget that. And for God's vision for us is more than just this life. Because God's vision for us, goal for us, is ultimately what? Heaven. It's heaven, eternity. Not this life. In other words, God is telling us, don't be too comfortable in this world. Because guess what? Why should you be too comfortable, B? You're going to be out of it shortly. You'll be out of it shortly or sometime sooner than you think you, 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 you would be. And I don't know about you, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you really believe that I come to prepare, I have prepared a place for you. And this place, all your wishes, all your deepest dreams, things that you never even imagined asking will be granted to you. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to walk with the Lord, to gaze your eyes heavenward, that in doing so, may you and I Join God at the heavenly banquet. Trusting in God's love and mercy, let us turn to Him now for all our needs and all the needs of the world. For Pope Francis, for Alexander, our bishop, and all our priests, bishops, and deacons, may God's grace be upon them to help them always to lead and guide their people with your everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Let us also pray for each and every one of us, that everything that we do may bring glory to God's name. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for all the prayers and concern, the words that lie deep in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for all our brothers and sisters who have gone before us, trusting and believing God's love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and compassionate Father, accept the prayers of your family gathered here. Help each and every one of us, O Lord, to turn to you, that in doing so, may we experience your love and your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, dearly beloved, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for the good of all the church. May these offerings of our service place on the altar in commemoration of Blessed Rita. Be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, and grant that release from earthly attachment, we may have our riches in you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer a sure sign of your love, and that your saving mystery may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. <laughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her into the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> through him, with him, and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever 
and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in the course of your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to the Son of Peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I have not worthy to
Let us pray. By the power of this sacrament, Lord, we pray, lead us always in your love through the example of blessed Rita and bring to fulfillment the good work you have begun in us until the day of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We have free cloth masks available at the church, so if you would like to have one, be sure to come by the church to pick one up at mass time. It'll be open. It'll be available to you. Also, many thanks for gifts, cards, and well wishes on my birthday. And also remember, Catholic Sentinels are available here, fresh off the press, so be sure to pick yours up. The July word among us is not here yet. It's been delayed by the coronavirus, so just so you're aware. So we'll, we'll get you as soon as we can. We'll let you know as soon as it arrives. Also, many thanks for all those who continue to support our parish during this difficult time. Many thanks for that. And if you would like to attend daily mass during this time, you can find the sign, uh, fill out the sign-up sheet form in our webpage. Be sure to do that. And remember, this weekend we're selling Ascension Sunday. This weekend. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, and love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And be the prince of the heavenly hosts. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the Jesus Christ, who are the world, seeking the glory of souls. Amen.